Hi everyone, welcome to this week's episode. We are here in Pattaya in Ocean Marina. Very, very beautiful marina. We are thrilled to be back because we have been away for a couple of months. And last week's episode, you saw us come back to the marina after an overnight passage, uh, which we were very thrilled about because it was actually a, yeah, nice. a success. Yeah. We were really pleased with ourselves. Well, we didn't sink the boat. We didn't sink the boat. Uh, we arrived without any even damaging the boat. Um, tied up. Tied up. Went to America. Happy days. America. We did something very important before we went to America. When we got back to Bataya, we had a premiere for Ruby Rose 2. It was in conjunction with Sea Wind, and we invited all of our patrons to come to Thailand. <laughs> and see the boat and we gave them maybe oh, six to eight weeks notice we yeah. organized it pretty last minute and we had about 45 people come to Thailand from America mostly from America. Some, from everywhere from Australia from Europe from England from America yes uh, we had people fly in literally arrive on a Saturday morning from California you know who you are and leave on Sunday night. Yeah, and yeah. I'm like, are you crazy? Yeah. They came all the way. Like the effort that people went to was insane. We had a long weekend, so a three day weekend. We did sailing trips and Phil, I have to give a shout out to Phil. He kind of skippered for us so that we could kind of mingle and, yeah. and chat to people. Thank you, Phil. We couldn't have done it without you. We had people like John Hearn from Doyle come along. Um, Mike from Sea Wind. John and Mike both did uh, seminars for everyone and Bernie as well. Yeah, sorry, from um, Banji. No, not Master Vault. He does everything. Okay. He does all those things. So there were seminars put on for the attendees and they could attend them or not. Um, and I think by, from what I understand, they were very valuable. We had evening drinks, we had evening dinners. Yeah. Yeah. It was amazing. It was so much fun. Everyone who came, I have to say, like, thank you so much. You guys were absolute legends. We had the best time. And, you know, Sunday afternoon when everyone left, I was sad to say goodbye. Like, we yeah. made genuine friends with basically everyone who came. So it was, it was a really great event. We will be doing another event as soon as we can, hopefully somewhere in the Mediterranean. Just being able to get all these kind of, all the knowledgeable people in the field to come and help out was superb. So the world premiere of the Sea Wind 1370 was here two months ago. Yeah. Fantastic. Anyway, then we anyway, went to America. And then we went to America and we did, uh, we went to the Annapolis Boat Show. You guys have seen all the, the reviews that we filmed. And if you like those reviews and let us know, and we'll carry on filming reviews at boat shows in the future. Yep. And then we've come back here. So we've finally been able to get back to Pattaya. And it's, as I said, been two months since last week's episode. Um, Nick, do you want to fill everyone in on what else has been happening? The reason why we spent too much time away. Well, so basically, this is a, a new boat, but not only is it a new boat, it is a new model. We are hull number two and hull number one, uh, Supernatural, went on a boat to America. So we kind of leapfrogged the order of everything that was going on so that we were the first boat to be test sailed. Now, you have seen all our videos. You have seen the... <laughs> the myriad of ups that we have made and whereas I would say a lot of them were operator error us not being used to the boat us not being used to sailing blah 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 we found that towards the end of that trip we were becoming far less cock up oriented and far more okay we're getting back into this however it did become apparent at several levels that there were areas of the design of this boat that could have been improved and as such we returned to Pattaya with a whole heap of issues that actually were not because this is broken this isn't working this isn't it was because the design needed to be improved and today what I want to talk to you about is the they're not warranty issues because these are things that would naturally not have worked in the first place they're things that need to be that these are design modifications and we have talked about this on our Patreon group, we've talked about this a lot. It is not a failing on Seawind's part, you are just seeing what no one else shows you. Yeah. Any boat that goes in the water, hole number one, there's like, oh, this doesn't work. And I have been on a certain French catamaran manufacturer's website years ago, and actually in those cases it falls to the owner's forums to say, this doesn't work, how do we fix this? And it falls to the owners. I'm going to give Seawind props here because all the feedback we have given them they said okay we're going to change that and they have actually it's two things a lot of the feedback that we have given them but also they just 
come across this themselves and thought yeah. this isn't going to work so in the whole design thing this is still work in progress just to fill you in they put hole number one in the water they sailed it to the chang where i was sick see the video below <laughs> at that point richard ward the ceo's on board and he's like this doesn't work that doesn't work that doesn't work i too was like yeah that doesn't work literally ripped out the bed redesigned the bed in the master cabin redesigned a hell of a lot of other stuff now that and that was a test sale now that we've got liverboards us living on board we can feedback and go that doesn't work that doesn't work can you change this and they have i'm going to detail most of what those changes are and what those modifications are and why the modifications were made now i'm going to start with the big one that is our sails when we took the delivery of our boat there was a lot of wear on our sails is it chafe are you literally sailing too hard are you reefing too hard are the sails insufficiently tough to take the take you know take the weather conditions and we all scratched our heads we had mark on board mark fullerton from doyle one during our hand of it he couldn't work it out we had Phil Harper, he couldn't work it out, I couldn't work it out, and eventually John Hearn came down and we took the main off the boat, we took it up to the conference room at the Ocean Marina Hotel, laid the whole sail out and just went over it. It turned out that the problem was the boom netting. There is, uh, on our boat, there is a net that holds the boom. It's like a kind of soft Park Avenue type of boom so that we've got brackets. And essentially the boom netting was too abrasive. And it actually, the wear was occurring when the sail was down. Um, it was laying on this netting and just chafing. And we then found, well, John Hearn found these little diamond patterns. Diamond patterns corresponded exactly to the diamond patterns on the boom netting. Mystery solved. Problem, not so much, e not so easy to solve because the sail had to be sent back to China and Doyle very lovingly <laughs> repaired, well, actually just changed most of it out. In the interim sea wind, or the team here at Ocean Marina then did uh, a lot of work changing the netting out to make something that's just less abrasive. So that was the big thing, like why is our mainsail damaged already? Now addressed, but obviously you can understand that to ship a sail to China, get it to a sail loft and then to ship it back to here and have it bent back on takes a period of time. That took about five to six weeks. That was something that really did need to be addressed. Yeah, that was it. That was um, one of the biggest ones. Other design modifications that are still being addressed. Uh, we had some damage to one of our, to the davit winch, and that was because the davit system is new. Actually, this is still work in progress. The eight mil line that holds the, the davit line, it's a single line davit system, is not thick enough. It needs to be a 10 mil line. And as such, that has chafed the line because it pulls through the jaws of the clutch. Eventually that will blunten the teeth of the clutch and then we'll end up in a situation that needs further rectification. So the davit line is still in place, the system is still in place, but I was working with Phil Harper yesterday. Oh, I wasn't working, I was looking. Phil Harper, <laughs> <yesterday>, Phil, work? <laughs> Phil Harper was yesterday working on getting the, rechanging the bridle system for the dinghy. That is all working super, super well now. So that is looking really, really good. That is another really big problem that actually was making our lives pretty difficult to get done. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just to kind of like get the dinghy up and down. That's all now been done. There were some finish issues. I would say there were some finish issues where I was like, okay, that needs to be a little bit better and it's all been done. So back, but it was things that we couldn't see, like back of lockers, underneath sofas. You are going to consider this to be fastidious. It is fastidious, but this is our home and, you know, if you, if something is not right you have to say look this this is not right and you need to and we are not the test boat but we're hole number two and as such we want this boat to be perfect not just for us because it's our home but because it will also be all the other boats that come out of this stable what else do we need to talk about Therese well there's a few other bits uh the there were some pumps the air conditioning pump the water pump far far too noisy that sound is the water pump <laughs> That sound is a water pump because we are doing some washing. It's so loud. They have had custom cowlings made for them. That is something that is very important that, 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 that we kind of needed to, to kind of have integrated and to stop the noise. That has all been done now. The anchor box, another problem. Now, the anchor box was really causing a problem because it was chipping the GRP. And that when we were raising the anchor, James has redesigned the whole thing so that there is now a stainless steel bracket that goes around the hole 
outside of it. Again, some minor electronics issues. There were some minor issues with light switches that weren't, we wanted some of the white light switches rewired. For instance, there is no dedicated red, red cockpit light switch for the night light. It had to be uh, controlled through C zone. And that was something that we like, okay, there's a spare switch here. We need this put through. So that basically at night, we're not going through a C zone menu to try and turn the red lights on. So that, that was done correctly. The lines, another thing we had, uh, some of the lines on port weren't run properly. So we ended up with an issue with that. And there are still things that are being modified that are coming through and coming through that we still have to exact. I've already mentioned the davits. One thing that has come through is um, the door in the to the aft cabin. It's the, the, the design of the hull and the deck mold means that the, it's, you cannot get the door all the way open. And they tried hanging the door one way, tried hanging the door the other way, and it still didn't give you, you know, the access that you needed. What they've come up with now is a, a bifold door, and it looks beautiful. So there's now a bifold door to be fitted, so that actually it now fits completely flush, which means you get full access. And this is not for people of you know increased girth. It is because <laughs> The underside of the bed or the berth in the aft cabin is actually for storage. So if you want to store, store a surfboard or suitcases in there, that is what it is designed for. Even if you have the optional drawers that we have, it will still take two or three very large suitcases. So you need to, be able to get the things in there to be able to stow them. So that's that one. We've still got a few other bits to do. I wasn't happy with the way the stereo speakers were wired through. The sound was funky. So we've had that done. We've had some work on the C-Zone done to kind of get a better menu system. And then the final thing, which is still un is, and again, props to Seawin for this. We had an issue with some of our solar panels. We looked at them and we're like, okay, that looks like a hotspot. It shouldn't be on a, on a new boat. We shouldn't have a hotspot there. Seawin are like, okay, yeah, we can see that there's an issue there. We're just going to take them all off and change them all out. So they are literally changing every single solar panel. So that is still through. So all 14 solar panels need to be removed and put back on. That hasn't been done yet. No, so, and because that is a, it's a big, big, job. big job to unsick a flex 14 panels. I would stand by the fact that this and the myriad of other small problems, and because w there is a lot of light by this, shouldn't have happened. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't have happened, but it does, and it happens with every other boat. And I always used to say this in dentistry, making mistakes is normal. It's how you deal with those mistakes that actually makes you as a, a, a decent surgeon or a decent boat builder. So what I would say to you is that, you know, we didn't have a quibble about this. We just said, there's a problem here. They're like, fine, we'll fix it. We will fix it. I don't actually know what the issue was with the solar panels, but, you know, not for me to sort out, it's just being sorted out. There's another couple of other random things that you would think, oh, these are really small things. Like uh, like the gel coat being done behind the washing machine and in the port. Yeah, so they yeah. basically, I was like, I don't like the I don't like the gel coat behind the washing machine. And yeah, okay. It's yeah, just that. exposed fiberglass yeah. really, painted. Yeah, so they, they, they literally did all that. But other small things, for instance, at the back of the transom of our boat on the outboard side, yeah. there was a patch that didn't have non-slip on it. It, it, it just, there was none there. and it is actually the point at which you step off to take mooring lines and it's bloody dangerous because it's a slippery surface so it's literally they fabricated two small non-slip patches that are now in place there and these are things that you know what if i'd gone to manufacturer n and said i need you to do this they'd have just said no we're not doing that you this is your boat so the fact that we have gone back and said and it's not just us, Phil Harper, who is like a, a very, very hard working and he really does have his eye on the ball, has turned around and said, look, that needs to be changed, that needs to be changed, that needs to be changed. And they've just done it all. The other things that are still to be done, there is some minor issues with some of the backs of the cushions. Again, these are not front facing things. And we're just about there. And that basically means rather than chasing the manufacturer and going, this is a problem. And they're like, don't know what you're talking about. They would literally said, yeah, we know. Thanks for letting us know. We're going to fix it. So that's where we are. So and and, and for example, like the the bifold door, like it wasn't just us saying to Sea Wind, this is our list of issues. It was also Sea Wind saying, actually, as we've been building hulls three and beyond, we've come up with a better solution. Yeah. So let's fit that. Let's retrofit that on your boat as well. So it was really a 
bit of a two-way street there. I think it's a three-way street. I think that was there's a, third, a what was the third Phil, Phil Harper. Yeah, yeah. So basically, Sea Wind continued to. This is a continuing evolution. This boat. I think naively we thought that once we spent so long like in this boat in the factory building this damn thing with Seawind and looking at the build that we thought okay we've got this done it's done no more modifications wrong once we got the boat and once we actually started sailing we like realized okay this is still going to be an evolution we still do this so we're sailing it and seeing what needs to be done Phil Harper is delivering and commissioning these things he is doing what needs to be done and Seawind are still not sitting on their hands and going actually well mm, yeah this is still work to be done so there will be smaller smaller evolutions of this boat but it's not going to be like I don't think it'll be a huge number of changes as new equipment comes out people are specifying these boats with lots and lots of different things but I think we're just about there love I think we are I think that, I mean fingers crossed yeah, yes obviously yeah but there's not a lot else I want to have I don't think it needs to be done on this boat. I really don't. I think we're just about there. Yeah. So I think that there's, you know, some other things that Seawind are considering, like all induction. I think they're thinking about adding more batteries. I think there's new things coming out. Evolution of the electronics on the market. And this will go into further iterations of the boat. There's also discussions about other cosmetic aspects of the boat, but not for us. So we now, I think, are about, ooh, what would you say, 90% of the way there? Yeah, for sure. I yeah. should hope so. Yeah. So more I, than that. And you know, it has been a baptism of fire. It was bloody stressful, you know, apologies to Nikki and Jason for having a whole myriad of problems going on there, but we're almost there. And as such, we are now setting off tomorrow morning to head down to Koh Chang, down by the Cambodian border. We are really gonna go and explore that area. There is a lot of amazing stuff for us to see. So just a uh, talking heads video showing you some of the aspects of what we've got but it's important because we on our patreon site on our whatsapp groups that actually discuss the 1370 with the 1370 owners we are talking about a lot of these things and it is important to actually give everyone else the okay well this is what's going on this is where we are and take it from there so i hope that wasn't too dry for you <laughs> i'll be back with new, more nudity and kind of like shenanigans next week when we're sailing around thailand so really? I don't know. Nudity, you know. probably, but then I'll have to blur it out and take me hours. So if you just keep um, everything on, that would save me a lot of time. All right. Listen, I hope you enjoyed that one. Just a little update for you. We're going to go and prepare the boat for sailing. I will see you all next week. We will see you all next week. Take care. Goodbye. Goodbye.